where it's at? Yep, I got it. It, okay. it was kind of hidden, but I've got it. I've got it. Okay. Hi, everyone. Sarah here from The Paper Cut. Um, it is Saturday morning, 8.30 Central Time, and we are in Crafter's Classroom. Video and sound. We are in Crafter's Classroom. Um, we <laughs> have both, so that's good. That was me. Um, my mom is with me here today, so if you have questions, you can type them in, and she will... Um, ask me. So I've had a little bit of a frazzling morning. We're waiting for people to get on, but I've had a little bit of a frazzling morning with computers here. Seems like that every time. I do try to be very organized and like calm and all that, but I'm actually streaming a video today for um, Art Anthology that's later on this morning, and I was having trouble with that, um, just getting it uploaded and such. So and like when I stream videos for other people, like I have no control over if it's pixely, if they're missing sound, all that stuff. And sometimes I don't have a chance to look at that. So I do apologize. Some of those glitches we've had in the past, they just send them to me and I upload them. But this morning, yeah, it was an uploading problem with the service that I use. Um, anyways, and then fractured cards, like I've done them, but I've never taught them. So. I'm hoping that goes good. <laughs> so let's go down to the table. Um, good morning, everyone. <laughs> yep. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, I'm going to switch to, there we go. We're down at the table. I have my kit. I did forget to tell you all to have a couple things <laughs> in my email. Um, you need a ruler, would be helpful, or you could use just a piece of paper. Um, so, and then the other thing is on the B card, which hang on, let me get my actual samples over here. Um, so these are the actual cards. Oh, my, this is from brush blending last night, so I hope that's not too distractive. I could probably turn it over. Yes, I can. Okay, so these are our four cards. So the fractured cards, this is the big one that started like as the craze where you would see it everywhere. Um, <clears throat> so we're gonna start with that one. That's the standard one. Um, this one is kind of, this one we're gonna do last. I asked for an hour and 15 minutes today, so um, I'm hoping we get through them all, but we'll do this one last because it's the easiest. These two are a little trickier, and that's what I'm a little bit worried about with teaching. Um, just because, A, I've never taught them, and these you, these are a little bit trickier. So we're gonna go do this one first and then we'll go on to these two. But I also forgot to tell you to have markers for this little B. So that little B we may assign to just attach later. So, <laughs> and I haven't had all my coffee this morning, although I think I'm talking a million miles a minute. So um, maybe you all think I had too much coffee this morning. Hmm. So we're gonna pull out this kit. I have another kit here with me just in case I um, am missing pieces. Sometimes like I'll go out in the shop and I'll grab pieces and parts. Um, so then if I am missing something, then um, I can grab from that. But I didn't have time to do that, so I just grabbed a whole other kit. Speaking of pieces and parts and missing things, if you are missing anything, um, and your kit might look different. It might look like this, or it might have this on the top. I'm not sure, because um, Becky was off and Brian helped Kit, and he likes to put everything inside, um, which does, sometimes when it's all inside, it's difficult to see which card it is, especially if all the cards have the same color card base. But I know some of them Becky did, and she put these on the outside. So <clears throat> it is either this dark gray metallic card, or it is, you know, with the pattern paper. But you're, this is what you're looking for. The kit that has the dark gray card, the two pieces of pattern paper. Oh, <laughs> I started to say that. I started to say, if you're missing a piece and you are watching live, you can just type it into the comments and my mom will write it down for me. If you are watching the replay, we don't get back to the comments like for if you're watching the replay. So if you're watching the replay and you are missing a piece, you need to email um, Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, at the 
papercut.com or info, I-N-F-O, at thepapercut.com. So, scored card. Two pieces of white, I think one's for the inside, one's for the outside. And then you have a piece of black and a piece of silver and a little baggie of stuff. Now, some of we gave you extra gems in this one, um, which we'll use two on one of the other cards. So, anyways, fractured cards start, oh, oh, yeah, it's in here. I was like, oh, I'm missing that piece right away, but it's in my little baggie. Um, fractured cards have, like, a shape, and then they have these little strips that... Um, divide out your background okay and it is much easier than it looks when it is a normal shape like a square or a rectangle so that's what we're starting with um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get a couple pieces out of the way one piece of white you should have two if by chance you only have one um, you know we're going to attach it on the inside if you only have one don't attach it but you should have two one just gets attached to the inside as like a layering swatch or a place for you to write on the inside. Um, usually our layering swatches are 3.75 by 5, um, but I like them a little bit bigger when I'm doing this type of thing. So this one's actually our large layering swatch. It's 4 by 5 and a quarter. So we do sell the large layering swatch Two, and I made them both the same size just so there was no confusion or somebody didn't attach theirs on the wrong one. So, And then we can set our card base aside for now. Okay, so now we have our white piece. That one we can kind of set aside right now too. We'll just keep it up here in the corner. Um, we are going to start with these two pieces, trimming our strips. Um, I gave you plenty to trim strips and in the other kits like you might only have two inches but you will have extra of this one if you goof or cut crooked or whatever you do um, so we're gonna pull out our trimmer and I did say a personal paper trimmer and a scissors just because it's easier so now these strips they can be a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch or they can be as wide as you want them mine are actually mine are five sixteenths so a quarter three eighths five sixteenths depending on how narrow you want your strips so i'm going to cut mine actually i think i'm going to try to cut mine to the five sixteenths too um, so you're going to cut four of them and sometimes everything is pre-cut in your kits, but the strips are a little bit harder on our big trimmer to cut. Oh, Jesse, if you only have one white piece that is, don't put it on the inside then, just kind of use it for your outside. And next time you order, I can send you one. I'll just throw it in if I, remind me, and... I don't you know. read it down. Oh, my mom's writing it down. Yep. But I won't send it to you separate because you usually get the kits every month. Um, or fairly regularly and if you just want to go on and and it's totally up to you and cut more of those because we are obviously going to use those strips on every <clears throat> card so if you're sitting here and you're done cutting your four strips and you want to just keep chopping away you knock your socks off because we're going to use strips and then you won't have to cut them later um, but then I did cut a piece of silver for behind each one and I kind of prefer rather than actually measuring these I will attach them on and then I'll cut it so I am gonna be an eyeballer type girl on these strips and as you can see you might not even need four long ones because you could cut this one off and you could use like after we cut this one off we'll use it over here so you might only need three of these um, but yeah, I'm going to be an eyeball kind of girl. If you want to measure, you have adder. Um, it's a very thin <clears throat> strip of silver. Oh, so now it's stuck to my fingers. Very thin strip of silver. So, um, it, it's like a 16th <coughs> to an eighth <coughs> than your black. 
Um, I think I'm just going to do three because, but so then I'll have one strip cut already for my next one. But yeah, I like to just attach them on and then do that trim after. But that's up to you, whatever you want to do. If you're not comfortable being an eyeball girl and you want to measure, how wide are the black strips? I cut my, my black strips, I said you could cut them anywhere between a quarter inch and three eighths of an inch. I cut mine right in the middle, which is at 5 sixteenths, which is one teeny tiny line past the um, quarter. So, and then, yeah, I'm just eyeballing to cut my, to do my silver. So I attached my silver and then I'm trimming it after, just because I find that easiest than actually measuring. Ooh, that looks pretty. And if it's a little bit crooked, you know what, who cares? If it's a little bit wider, who cares? And if somebody tells you that your stuff is crooked and wider and doesn't totally match, then the heck with them, they are off your card making list or your handmade card list of who you, who deserves your handmade cards. That's how I show the love. If you get a handmade card, you know I really love you. Because, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I don't buy store-bought cards. So basically, it's either a handmade card or you don't get a card at all. Um, so anyways, now we have mm -hmm. our three strips. I'm going to set my paper trimmer behind me for a little bit. Um, now, let's open up our little pack. And I'm going to... There we go. What do we have in our little pack? I don't know. We did these so long ago, I forgot. Let's see. We have, well, we have two words. I did enjoy and I did miss you because maybe not everybody has somebody, you know, that they want to send a card to that says and miss you. So I also gave you enjoy. I like to give you choices um, just because, because I do. Because <laughs> not everybody can use all of the same stuff. And I know you probably all have plenty of stuff at home, but... This way you have it all together. So then you should have three of these flowers. These are from our dye. It's actually a dye that's kind of named stupid on our website. It's just a circling layering dye set um, because it was our very first one and I didn't want to put just circles on it. So I added like these flowers to it. So it's dye 010, dye 10, 010. Um, so you have one in silver, you had one in our white leather like, which I may have forgot on the um, list of supplies because I forgot that I used the leather like. Ooh, and then I okay. think this is the canary. So we can set those aside. Plus you have your gems. Remember, you're gonna need a couple gems later. Plus you have a square. Um, I think it's a two inch square and I think we just chopped them into two inches so you can start on either layer it doesn't matter it was just easier for me to put the two bigger same size pieces in your pack so it doesn't matter whether you start with um, the gray daisies as your base this is from our new daisy printed pad by the way I'm actually on the ball and have the printed pads made before showing them shocking I know did so, you say that's a triple circle layering die set? Sir? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's why I mean it's kind of named stupid. It should be called like circles and flowers or something oh, no, like that. It's triple circle layering die set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like I said, named dumb. Okay. Um, maybe I'll have to change the name of that one. <clears throat> so yeah, you can start with the gray or you can start with the yellow. Doesn't matter. You are going to attach your diamond on there. On mine, I tried to do it centered, but I didn't measure it. Gosh, no, I did not measure it. So you're going to attach that on there. Now I'm glad I took an hour and 15 minutes because the easiest one we're taking longer. <clears throat> and maybe that's just because we're starting. Um, so we're just going to attach that. And then we are going to take our strips and we're going to start our first one 
flush with one edge of our diamond, which was our square that we turned. Um, and you're just going to attach that. I'm going to put tape on the whole thing because then I'm going to trim it off and I can use it somewhere else. So I'm going to put tape on the back. <clears throat> I am going to attach it flush, you know, right up to my diamond and also flush up to this end so it makes a straight line going right here. Okay, and then we can take our scissors, and this is why I said to have a scissors and a personal paper trimmer. And you can look at this from the back or you can look at it from the front. Um, and if you're not comfortable and you want to cut all at one time, like with a big paper trimmer, you know, you can cut a little bit away from that, or you can try to cut right flush to the edge. So you can cut flush to the edge, or you can pull it away, because we're going to end up cutting later after we attach the yellow pieces on. Um, so totally up to you. I'm going to cut flush, and I'm going to be very careful. Um, but remember this one has tape on it because remember I said you could possibly use this one over here on the other side. So I have that. I'm turning it upside down. Then I'm going to take another one. <coughs> Maybe I should have asked for an hour and a half. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Um, then we're going to attach this one again flush up to the edge of our square and flush up to the edge of our previous one. And again, because this one I'm just going to trim a little bit further. You can either trim it flush up to the edge or you can leave a little bit hanging off because we're going to take our big personal paper trimmer out to trim after we get the yellow <coughs> in there. Um, and then next one. And now I'm going to use my other piece right here if it's long enough. Let's see if it's long enough. It is long enough. So again, I need to turn it. So. We're going to go flush up to the edge, flush up to the edge of our previous strip. <clears throat> okay, and then it's hanging off a little bit. And then we have our last one. And you can, I turned my thing. And we're going to go again, flush up to the edge, flush <clears throat> into the corner. and then trim that off. And like I said, you can trim flush, you know, or you can leave it hanging out a little bit. <clears throat> now, this this method or this is the same with any shape that you do, um, with the exception of the circle. So yeah, I'm not even going to say that. But now you're going to take your other piece and it's going to fit and this is why you can use scrapped because because you really only need a triangle right here but you it fits like right up flush and flush and because you have an angle there this is what makes it different with the um the honeycomb piece or the circle because you don't have that angle it's weird angles so we're going to take this and if you want to attach it and conserve your paper, you know, and then trim it from the back. You can, because then you have a whole big hunk left. I think that's what I'm going to do. But we're going to just attach this flush into this corner. Or you can eyeball it, you know, and cut a hunk out right now. You're going to use scraps, so they're not going to be this, you know, bigger, nice piece. So, yeah, if you want to cut, <clears throat> cut an angle of it out of there right away, you can. Just so then you know where to tape. Actually, I think I'm going to do that. And like I said, I've never taught this before, so I'm sorry if I'm being a little scattered. I'm kind of thinking it through as I go. I mean, I made the cards, but sometimes I just make them and don't think about them. But I'm going to just cut that off so I'm, I know where I'm taping. Because <clears throat> I don't want to put, you know, otherwise if I would have done it on the big piece, I wouldn't have known exactly where I was putting my tape. So I just kind of cut a chunk. Now I know where I'm putting my tape. And I do like to get my tape all the way up into my little corners as best as possible. Now I have to remember how this fits on there. Yep, fits right up there. So again, <clears throat> a piece of scrap, flush up to the edge, flush up to that line. 
Now we're going to do the same thing with our other piece. And whatever hunk you want to use, that's perfectly fine. And again, I'm just going to, because we're not using a scrap, we're using a whole sheet. Up to you whether you want to cut it off. So now you have another big scrap that you could use for a fractured card. So throw that in your pile of scraps. It will probably, mine will probably end up in one of our grab bags. <clears throat> so I'm attaching that piece again, flush up to that strip and flush up to the other strip. Okay, so now we have that. So now, now is when I say use your paper trimmer and trim those off. Or if you're more comfortable using a scissors, you can trim them off that way. I'm going to pull my paper trimmer out. <clears throat> Whatever you are comfortable using. <clears throat> I might need to get a sip of coffee. Hang on, maybe I should <clears throat> I, gotta, I need to clean my room. Because <laughs> I don't even have room behind me for my coffee cup. Oh yeah, I do. Okay, I found the spot. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to trim. This is what, every once in a while this trimmer doesn't cut and it's because there's adhesive on the back. So that's the one bad thing about um, trimming with adhesive on the pieces because then they stick to your trimmer blade and that doesn't make the best for cutting in the future. Mm, yeah, I hate that. Because yeah, every once in a while my trimmer won't trim that well. And then I'm like, oh, there's a stupid piece of paper on there with adhesive. And this trimmer blade is really sharp. This looks like a lot like quilting. Oh yeah, yeah, it quilting does. Quilting your pieces together. <clears throat> yes, it does, Marion. Okay, I just wanted <clears throat> to get my stickies off there really quick. So that's what I was doing when I wasn't on camera, because I know people were worried about me cutting my hands. So then I'm going to attach this. Oh, Sarah, do you have kits left or not? Oh, <clears throat> yes, I do have kits left. Hang on a second, because I actually... I'll, I'll I think, post a link for you. Yeah, I think I was wrong. There must have been two sizes of swatches. <clears throat> oh, no, they're the same size. Oh, these are the same size. So we do need to trim this all the way around a little bit so it fits on our <clears throat> white layering swatch. I didn't know that. Sorry. I think I gave you your paper... <clears throat> so depending if this and maybe I cut them because we had to remake kits because we ran out um, so depending on if you need to cut that a little <clears throat> bit you might need to cut it a little bit or it might fit on there so because this is the same size as the other ones so I'm going to cut a little bit off of each side depending and like I said when I when we remade the kits maybe I cut them wrong the printed pieces, because I thought they were all cut together <clears throat> anyway. So, sorry, that was an oops on my part if I did that when we remade. So now that piece I cut down to three and seven eighths by five and an eighth, so it has just a slight border <clears throat> around it. So see how there's just, you can, it's hard to see when it's on, with the printed, but now that it's on the gray, you can see that there's a slight border all the way around. So I'm going to attach my printed piece to that front piece. <coughs> for that there. And again, you may or may not, depending if I cut it the wrong size when we did the secondary ones. <coughs> We're 
attaching that layer so there's a little white border. But everybody's got a paper trimmer. <clears throat> and then we're attaching that to our card front. So this first card took me a half an hour, and I hope it was just explaining. <coughs> However, now I'm kind of thinking I should have taken um, an hour and a half. We're going to pick out a word. I'm just going to do the enjoy because it's less weeding. You guys may have already weeded. <coughs> weeded stuff? Weed. -ed. And I'm just going to attach that on there. Now, uh, and then I'm going to save the miss you. That's going to go probably in somebody's scrap bag. Um, and then I'm going to attach these on there. Now it's up to you whether you want to pop them up or not. So pop these up if you want to. Don't pop them up if you don't want to. Bend up your little flower things a little bit if you want to. Like you can make them look like they're a little bit dimensional, um, just so they're not so flat. But my last layer, which is <coughs> my flower, that I am going to <coughs> pop my yellow flower up. Sometimes I have some stuff pre-cut my foam tape. This day I do not. <coughs> so yeah, Michelle, who's just on there, thank you that you love them. I would order the kit fairly soon um, because I don't know that we'll be remaking them again, and I probably should have had Becky do more, and if Becky's <coughs> listening, she's probably like, yeah, I probably should have not listened to Sarah and done more. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Because sometimes Sarah underestimates, just because she doesn't want all, well, she, and now I'm talking in third party about myself, just because I don't want all of these extra pieces and kits hanging out there, and sometimes it's hard to judge what's going to be popular and what's not. Um, this one was. And when I had her remake, I was like, well, we don't get too many orders after. Um, so, but, yeah. If you've got any little snibbly things on there. <clears throat> and then you can take one of your small gems and you can dot your I or dot your J. Yeah, you can always watch the replay because um, if you need to slow <laughs> down, like if you're like Sarah, you're like talking a million miles a minute, <clears throat> slow down. Um, anyways, that's our first card. And that was the easiest one, and it took, still took us a half an hour. Actually, the deer is pretty easy. <clears throat> so I'm thinking we're not going to get to the deer, so I'm just going to talk about this guy. If we get to him, fine, but just so I'm not rushed at the end. Um, this one, you're going to do basically the same thing. Attach your happy birthday, trim your strips and attach them, and then you'll attach your other your printed pieces in there. Now, the one thing you want to make sure is that this happy birthday wishes is far enough over this way because this strip is only like four and a quarter so you don't want it to be short um, and then I did take a ink pad and just went over the top you know before I did this I went over the top I did direct paper to give the dark brown here and I also did a blending brush on our deer because he's all cream so I blended brush him so hopefully we get to him but just in case we don't he is probably pretty easy also just because he's got straight lines so we're gonna go on to the next two that are a little more tricky and I really had to think through how I was going to teach them so let's go on to the B next and then we'll go on to the circle I showed a fractured card um, during one of my Thursday nights. If you guys do not know, I do Thursday night um, <clears throat> live videos every Thursday. Um, three of the four Thursdays during a month are just demos. 
one Thursday a month is a, it's called a fun time Thursday, which we sell a kit. Um, so just a little FYI. So let's look at our pieces. And here. this week's Thursday is. Oh yeah. This week's, week's Thursday is actually on Tuesday <laughs> because I'm going to be at spring bling. So if any of you are going to spring bling, my mom and I are going to be there. We'll be there on Thursday. Our fun time Thursday this week is actually going to be aired live on Tuesday and then I'll replay it on Thursday. Okay. So <clears throat> you have your card. You have your envelope. You have your little thing with your bees and your, um, <laughs> what am I saying? Yes. <laughs> you have your things with your You're bees thingy. and your honeycombs <laughs> yeah. or your hexagons. <laughs> you have four pieces of printed paper or three. Um, <clears throat> this is going, I'm going to get the card out. Our main one is this one. And then you have different colors. You have black. This is to cut your strips, which we're going to do. And again, that's a pretty big piece. <clears throat> you have um, a big piece of white. Now, save that big piece of white. Because remember, this one I did cut, and it's the right size. So save your big piece of white. Put it under there. Then you have two more pieces of white that are exactly the same size as this honeycomb. <clears throat> now this is part of our sweet, is it sweeter than honey um, pack? Yeah. It's the printed paper pad. Yeah. Sweet as honey. Sweet as honey paper pad. So all of the designs that are in here are from that pad. Again, <clears throat> I got the paper pad done before I actually taught the class. Yay for me. Um, one of these, this, you have two that are the same size as your yellow. One gets attached on the inside. If by chance you only have one, save it because we need it to make a template. Mm -hmm. But if you have two, go ahead and attach one to the inside of your card right away. <clears throat> oh, we're going to see Diane at Spring Bling. So I'm doing a special make and take during Spring Bling of mm -hmm. a Circle Window Magic card. I think that's on Friday. I know it's on Friday. Well, I think it's on Friday, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go first and cut some strips. Again, a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch. These I did a little bit narrower at a quarter just because there's a lot going on on this card. So cut. And this one, you can see that there's one, two, three, four, five fractures on here which there actually could be six fractures on here i missed <clears throat> that one but i kind of like it like that so i'm going to do that so five strips um that are a quarter inch five strips that are a quarter <clears throat> to um three eighths of an inch So. Megameet must be going on at the same time. Sue Plosky's going there. Oh, Megameet is going on. Megameet's the first weekend in May. Oh, okay. <clears throat> or no, Megameet is the um, second weekend in May. Oh, oh, you're. Oh, it says that you're. I, Spring Bling is this coming up weekend. Um, huh. <clears throat> Spring Bling is this coming up weekend. I thought Megameet was always Mother's Day weekend. Well, maybe she's only doing one. Oh, yeah, that could be. Yeah. Yes, that could be. <clears throat> Especially if you're traveling, it's hard to do both. So, again, you might have an extra hunk of black. That's okay. Now comes the tricky part. Yeah, Mega Meat is the 10th through the 13th of May. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to put all of my three pattern ones there. We are going to... Open this out. Just get your two combs <coughs> out. We are going to start with our smallest honeycomb. So we have our biggest honeycomb. Um, and we're going to start with our smallest. Now, this is what we're doing before I start doing it. We are making a template. And we're kind of going to cut puzzle pieces. Because when I <coughs> did this one... I kind of, I trimmed, I trimmed a little bit more, I trimmed a little bit more to get that at the right angle. 
um, or I kind of set it down. <clears throat> yeah, so it was just harder. So I think this is what will make it easier. And then when I did the circle one, this is the technique I used. So I have a piece of paper <clears throat> that Spring Bling is in Ohio. That's at for Stamplistic puts it on. So you're using the piece of paper that's exactly the same size as your original base. And then you're gonna take a pencil. I am going to take a Sharpie, um, just so you can see it. I'm gonna trace, oops, <clears throat> trace the outside of my, and I drew on it. Thank God I used black paper. Um, so we have our, and you're using your smallest one. Okay, then I'm taking a ruler. <clears throat> and again, I'm going to use a Sharpie. You can use a pencil. And I am drawing my, like my fractures. So I'm extending my lines and I'm making a template. So this template you can save. You can put it in a little baggie and you can save it as your template if you ever want to do this shape again <clears throat> because we are basically cutting puzzle pieces so then we know what we're cutting templates so we know what to approximately cut those at okay so this is our card design and again save this if you want. And I'm going to tell you the reasoning between why I have a small one and a large one. A, the small one's going to go on top, but I cut this out of the small one. So then any <clears throat> overlap in that center part can be covered up by the large one. And then I did layer the small one on top of it for my be happy. So that's why, and in the circle one, you'll see too, I have a smaller circle that we're going to use to make our template. And then I have a larger circle, at least I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so now we're going to number these. One, two, three, four, five. So when we put it back together, and this is the center. And this is a little putsy. That's why I would save these pieces so you can use them to remake this card if you would like. And the circle one, too. And I'm going to cut it apart, but I'm not going to cut it apart <clears throat> all the way. With this with this one, I can do this, um, where I'm not cutting it apart quite. Oh, maybe I'm cutting it apart all the way. <clears throat> so I cut that. I've got my number four piece. Yeah, this one's a little putzier. It was harder for me to figure out how to teach <clears throat> this card. Oh, actually, with this one, if you just cut here and then you cut here, then we can, it'll be easier. You'll see why in just a minute. Um, so we have those pieces. We're eventually going to cut right here, but not quite yet. Because now I'm going to take this piece, I'm going to set it next to my little puzzle piece. I'm going to take this and because now we need the placement <clears throat> of our hexagon. So if I just leave those together for a minute and I'm going to draw with a Sharpie, you can draw with a pencil and I'm just going to trace <clears throat> the upper lines of my, of my hexagon because now I can trace the rest of my hexagon in there. So yeah, teaching this took a little bit of time to figure out. And when you're just, if you were just doing it at home, you can, um, you know, like I just pieced these in here and mm -hmm. cut and cut and got them to fit. But teaching it, I wasn't going to tell you to do that. So that's why I made this little template. Again, save it, put it in a little bag. So now we are going to trace our whole hexagon our whole honeycomb on here.
Yes, Diane, isn't she a great teacher? You know, I've watched <laughs> teachers all my life, and Sarah really does a nice job. So, yeah. So now, <clears throat> in theory, we should be able to attach this one on here, and we should be able to cut out, like, this piece we don't need to cut because it is <coughs> that paper, and this one we don't need to cut because it is that paper. So these two we don't need to cut because they're already there, okay? So of this paper, we need to cut just one. We can take our template and we can cut that. And this one, so we don't <coughs> need our center. Again, save your pieces. You have, and you can pick whichever bees. I don't know what you have flying where, um, but in one corner you're gonna cut that one and in the other corner, I know they fit on there because I did this. Hmm. Maybe I did this. <laughs> <laughs> How did you do this? How right? did I do that? There you go. Yeah. So you're gonna cut that to you're gonna cut that piece out of out of there. <clears throat> and actually you can do it any way you want to do it. But I know they both fit on there in some yeah, former fashion. Former fashion, correct. <clears throat> um, so yeah, cut those two pieces however you are going to cut them. Actually, I think I'm going to cut them right there. Um, and no worries. Yeah, just no worries. Now I can't remember. Oh, I know what I did. Okay. So cut your pieces. The trait of a good teacher, Sarah, making it look so easy. <laughs> Remember, save your templates. I don't know. Wait until, wait until we finish this card to tell me that. Because <laughs> If I could follow this, anybody could follow this. Because, yeah. <clears throat> You're always good at putting puzzles together, Sarah. <laughs> <clears throat> I like it the other way. You didn't have as many lines to cut, I don't think. But um. No, you didn't, but I didn't know if the... <clears throat> and now I'm trying to think through what I actually did when I put this together. Because I don't think I put it together like the normal fracture. I think I attached my pieces to the... I did it with the circle. This one, I, this one is the one that I just like <clears throat> put together. I think all of your edges, if they're not straight, get covered up by the <coughs> by the black the black lines. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, so those two are those two. Those two are that. Sarah, did you mentor when you were in college or high school? What do you mean? Did I mentor? Did some? you mentor other students? No. <coughs> <coughs> oh yeah so now I'm figuring out where this goes okay so now we can attach those pieces on there and it doesn't matter if they're a little bit wider because this is actually going to sit on top of there so that's how we got our fractured um, you can attach because this one goes right in the corner this one goes right in the corner then this one goes right up to there. Our lines are gonna cover that up. So go ahead, now save these, because this was kind of a pain. So save that, save your little template in a baggie. So you are not getting my little template like in my pieces and parts stuff. <clears throat> You'll, you will get these little scraps will go into our grab bags. <clears throat> but now you can go ahead and attach those on there. <clears throat> and then we're going to overlap. Yes, that's what I did. So yeah, trying to figure out how to teach this all to you was, oof, I had to think it through in my brain. And actually, I decided to do <clears throat> this class before I knew exactly what I was doing. I mean, I could do the regular fractured cards, but to do the... Um, this fractured card and the circle is a little bit, a little bit trickier. 
but I haven't seen that many. I actually, I think I only saw one <clears throat> circle fractured card online, and I saw one honeycomb fractured card online. So, you guys now have the in to those, and you can be wowing people with, they'll be like, how did you do that? Because it doesn't have the regular right angle. And then our little black strips. Where did I put mine? I cut them. Remember? Oh, here they are. They're sitting <laughs> off to the side. Because our little lines are going to end up covering those connections there. <clears throat> wow, that is a nice card. Okay, hang on. We're good. But I did attach my You have an hour, Sarah, an hour and an hour and fifteen minutes. Oh good. Yeah. <laughs> you have half an hour left. Okay. Oh well almost. Well we have to do the circle one and the circle one's gonna be a little Yeah. So this one is flush to the outside, flush to our line. And since you guys use pencils, your lines might not be as thick as mine. Um, so there's a little gap in there. Now, this piece I did put on next. And then let's just talk about this mm -hmm. before we um, start attaching stuff. <clears throat> I This one, I did put these all flush to the hexagon. If you want to do them on the outside of the hexagon, you can. But these I did flush to this edge. And I think when I originally made this one, because I wasn't sure how I was all doing this, um, that's why I did that. But again, like mm -hmm. I said, if you want to attach that and go you know, flush, you just have to make sure that these edges are covered up. I think that's why I did it. Um, so, and again, this one I could have put a line going off this way but I kind of liked that bigger area <clears throat> so this is totally up to you and I'm gonna attach this one on there first just so I can cut my angle actually whew. yeah let's see I'm gonna attach that one on there first so I can cut cut my angle oops when I have narrow pieces of paper like this, sometimes I kink them when I cut my... So up here I'm attaching that first flush to that edge. <clears throat> and then I'm cutting that off. Then we're going to do it flush to the edge. That'll cover up <clears throat> there. Then we're going to do it flush to that edge. We're going to cover up that. And I'm just setting it up before I do it, just to show you. Then we're going to do it flush to that edge to cover up that. Then we're going to do it flush to that edge, which will cover up that. And there we go. And then our small one kind of covers that up. So, oh, and I forgot about this one, flush to that edge to cover up that. Yay. OK, it works. <laughs> it always, it's always Ooh. a good thing when it works when you're teaching it live. Yeah. So remember I had my top one and then I had this one. Um, so I already have like two strips on there. I forgot that I attached this. So I have my top edge. And then I have this one strip attached so far. <clears throat> now I'm going to put tape on a bunch of strips so I can just attach, attach, attach. Virginia, I, I'm not sure that I'm making it look easy. <laughs> 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 because this is the first time that I've taught this so but it it is easier doing it this way than um, you know cutting my angles and recutting them so then they actually fit in there
And then we're going to go on to the circle because that one's that one's a little difficult too. So then, if we don't have time for the um, deer, you can just do that one. So now again, <clears throat> I went flush to the edge of my thing. And I think you can't do it on the outside because then you need to cover up this strip right there. That's why I did it flush, which I couldn't figure out. Now, if you wanted to, you could take and cut these at little angles so they match right there. Not necessary, though, because you're going to end up putting this piece on there that covers up a lot of that. Now I have another one, so again, you can just put it on there straight, or if you want to cut it at an angle, I just happened to get lucky that I did it at the exact right angle. Twice now. <laughs> <laughs> so, flush to the inside edge of the large hexagon. So that's covering up our line right there. <clears throat> and we have our next one. Again, if you want to cut it at a little angle, can I get lucky three times in a row? If I can't, I just overlap it. So that one goes wash. Now you could cut these off as you were doing it, um, but I'm just trying to go faster, so I'm going to pick it up all at one time. I think I'm going to talk about coloring our B, but then I'm going to go on to our circle. So there, now we've got all of our fractures. This is the mm -hmm. top where the little B goes. I am going to just turn it over and cut all of my little strips off. This one we don't need to cut on our big paper trimmer because we um, did our pieces right to the edge because we made our little template and our template was the exact size of our original piece of printed paper. <laughs> there, Diane. I don't know if I made it harder for you. said it makes sense, so good. I, I'm happy about that. But <clears throat> I really had to think through the whole piecing of this one together. So now this will fit right on here and then that will fit on the front of your card. Oh, we only have 15 more minutes. So I think I'm gonna skip attaching the B happy and the B for now. We're gonna go on to the circle because I really wanna get through the circle. So I should have mm -hmm. taken an hour and a half or an hour and 45 minutes. <clears throat> That's going to go on the front of your card. Because the circle, oh, ran out of tape. That's okay. I was on the ball for that one. I knew I was going to run out of tape. Just filled another tape gun. I happen to have a lot of tape guns because when I would do make and takes like on the road, I would have one for each spot or one for every other spot. So, so yeah, I can be a two, two tape gun holster kind of gal. <clears throat> I could do two quarters, I could do quarter and a half, I could do two halves. <laughs> so now we're gonna use foam tape and attach this guy. I'm sorry that we're not going to get through all these. I thought an hour and 15 minutes would be fine. Um, to color the B, you need a yellow marker, and then I also used like a gray marker, which I think I used W3, <coughs> but I don't even have that one here because it's still in my retreat stuff. So let me talk about coloring the B first before I go on to the circle. I'll talk about coloring the B because you could do that while you're, I think there's a big break. Um, <clears throat> I 
Yes, so you only need a yellow and a gray marker if you want to color the, um, <clears throat> let's just look at this really quick. So you have the Be Happy, which there is a separate B, and then there's EE, -E, and then there's Happy. My B is in my bag that you're going to attach to there. Then let's talk about the B. Okay, and uh, Becky, you I was very careful about getting all your B parts in there. You have a black background, which the B fits on. So even though he's got these two little tiny antler thingies there, this is black. So you don't need those. His eyes, the center of his eyes, are black. You don't need those. So his wings, I covered gray, and then his body and his head, I colored yellow. <clears throat> um, and when you color him, these little pieces don't need to be colored black because you'll just see them through the background. <clears throat> and then we're going to go on to the circle. Because yeah, I could have used a whole hour and a half to hour and 45 minutes. Huh. Mm. Who knew? But yeah, you see you don't need to color the black pieces because the base of the B is black and that's RB and I did the base so you could um, build on the base rather than have all of these teeny tiny pieces that you <clears> need <throat> to build together. There are teeny tiny pieces but as long as you do your main background black you don't have to worry about all the little teeny tiny pieces because it's already black. The only thing that I did worry about was the little thing that goes around the eyes so this these little this little thing that goes around the eyes i did that in gray i did the wings in gray and i did the body and the head in yellow so two marker colors to answer your question <clears throat> and your be happy but yeah becky was really careful about getting all of the b pieces in there that b is part of our sweet as honey dye so this is the sweet or sweeter than honey. This is sweet as honey paper pad, and then there's a dye that has this bee that is sweet as honey. So, all right, <clears throat> moving on. Circle. It's this one that you see the black. The other one you see the embossed pieces and the deer. <clears throat> Okay, now I have 15 minutes left. I think we can do this. Okay, so again, we have our card base and we have a piece of gold Miri Sparkle. We have a piece of, um, I think this is opal. I did different words for you. So you have the Hello Friend, but if you don't like Hello Friend, if you want to use it for something else, you could cut those into little ovals. You could cut just a straight line. I like to give you different word choices. So that's what that is. I'm going to just set it inside my card. We have this piece that layers on our opal. We have our two circles. <clears throat> the white non-metallic piece is for our template because that is the same size as this one. This is from um, a craft along that we did earlier this year and I didn't have it done when we did it. It's um, black and white with a touch of color. So that one is ready. Um, then you have your two circles. You have your die cut butterfly and you have your black that you're going to cut strips. Text insert. going to do that really quick. Text insert. Folded piece of text paper. I like to put a little bit of tape down the center of my folded card. I don't go to the edge because look at this doesn't go to the edge. If you go all the way to the edge you'll tape your card shut. If I have a half inch I just put it straight down the middle. If I have a quarter inch I put it on both sides. I hold this at a 90 degree angle and then I take my folded text insert set it right into that angle right up to the score and I don't do it flat because I could go over the score so I hold it at an angle 
set it in there, and then I fold it flat. And then I have my text insert attached. If you put tape on the whole thing on both sides and then fold it, you could, um, you'll get bumpleys in there. I can't remember what word I wanted to use. Bumpleys. Bumpleys, Bumpleys. sounds like a good word. <laughs> Bumpleys is a very descriptive. Yes. <clears throat> so we're going to take these and put them in here. Um, somebody's oh. calling. I'm not answering. Um, you had extra, extra um, gems. Those are for your butterfly. Okay. Let's go on to our template. <clears throat> Remember, our template is just your <clears throat> non-coated piece of paper um, that is the same size as your printed paper. Barbara, you want to know if this is still available? I think, are you asking about the entire kit? Yeah. Yes, it, it is still is. available. But I would order it because there's <clears throat> not too many out there. So, um, anyways, you're going to use your small one. See, black, large, small, gray. I'm turning mine over to do it from the back, um, and I'm going to use my sharpie again we're making our template and I put it right in the center so we're doing the exact same thing except it's a little bit different putting your strips on oh I forgot to cut my strips now <laughs> you could put I've got four sections on here you could put five six seven eight nine ten you could put as many sections on here as you wanted but what you're gonna do is you are going to follow now there's not a flat <clears throat> edge like there was on the um, honeycomb so you are going to follow one of your edges you know try to get it and it's just going to extend off of there and you're going to do that four times so there's no exact science what that measurement is you just do you you do you That's what I mean. If you wanted to make six of them around here, you could. So see, I drew those two on there. And this, this one is different. Oh, well. And this one I'm going to do right here. So this is not an exact science of exact angles or how many inches it is up there or whatever. It just doesn't matter because nobody's going to see mine and get a ruler out and measure it and say you did yours at the wrong angle. <clears throat> now, number them. One, two, three, four. And then you know, well, and maybe you just want to put an arrow so you know you number it that way. One, two, three. I do that on my Christmas lights where I number and use an arrow for where they attach. And then this is your center. And you did take your smallest one. So again, cut those out. And now this first cut, and I might pull my smaller scissors out. Oh, maybe not, I can't find it at the moment. Um, you're gonna cut all the way around this circle. Or, you know, you could die cut that circle in the center, then you have a perfectly perfect circle, but it doesn't matter. <clears throat> How big is that circle, sir? I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Um, I don't know. Hang on, I'd have to okay. measure it. It's from, these circles are both from our circle stitched sets, so, um, okay, it's, this one's two and three eighths, thank you, and this one's, oh, we've got nine minutes left, oof, um, this one's two and five eighths, anyways, let's keep going, we're going to go all the way to the end, um, so, sorry. Amber Bolton is up next. I'm not going to end five minutes early or three minutes early or whatever. Um, our prize winner today is Carol Randolph. I usually send prizes like with the next class kit unless Carol orders. I looked, she orders. 
she ordered the last couple months, so hopefully she orders next month. Otherwise, I will send it separately. Okay, so now we have our templates. With the um, the one, with the B one, we were able to kind of leave it together um, and draw our circle on there. This time, I don't have that because it was a circle. It was easier to cut all the way around. So now I'm kind of placing my templates on here. <clears throat> and then I do need <clears throat> to draw my circle. I'm concentrating. And you could attach them with a little bit of removable tape if you wanted, but I'm drawing my circle on there. I'm using a Sharpie. If you want to use a pencil, oops, because you're pretty much covering it all up anyways. Oops. <laughs> That's okay, they'll all connect once I... All right, <clears throat> so there's my circle. Again, our big circle is gonna end up covering it up. Now we need to cut our two pieces of gold. So our number one is gold, our number three is gold. So our number one is gold. Our number three is gold. Our number two is this pattern paper, so we can set that template aside. We can set our circle aside. We can set our number four aside. Those you put in your little baggie for keeping that template if you wanna do more of these cards. Now the one thing that I forgot, which I have to do really quick, is I have to cut some strips because you guys probably already have them done. This is a two inch one. Again, I'm gonna cut them at a quarter <clears> to <throat> five eighths of an inch, or three eighths of an inch. So cut your strips if you haven't already. You probably did. Sarah, am I going to have to make cards at Spring Bling? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You're going to find out how, how artistically challenged your mother really is. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing at Spring Bling. Okay, then. Okay, so I've got my <clears throat> strips. So I'm going to cut my two pieces. Um, I'm saving my templates. So yes, you can now see how doing a um, non-square or rectangle is much more difficult than doing, but you're going to really impress people because they're going to be like, how did she do how that? How did you do that? Yeah, that is for sure. I'm going to wonder how I did that too. <laughs> so... <clears throat> So we've got five minutes, so we probably have just enough time Ooh. to um, finish the main assemblies for this card, so I apologize that I did not ask for more time. Um, who knew that it was going to take this long? Because I, yeah. Hmm. Alright, so we can attach those two in the corners. <clears throat> now, I have to remember what I actually did. I think I actually put my, um, <laughs> I think I actually put my strips on first, but you can't extend them too far mm. up. So let's put our, let's put our gold on. Because these I didn't have going on the top of the circle. 
I'm almost sure I have these underneath the circle. So yeah, besides um, the ones when we do the crossover, like this was a pretty popular kit. Um, and yeah, <laughs> maybe I will, depending on how many orders are coming in right now, I may have Becky make up more, which if she's listening, she's probably going, oh geez. <laughs> so again, now it's going to be flushed to the outside of your paper. Also, Tammy McCoy, we're going to see at Spring Bling too. Yay. I think Leslie Gearhart, we're going to see her at Spring Bling. <clears throat> so now your circle is going to cover up any gaps, but we need to just cover up those lines first because then this is going to attach over the top. But we, we want it to kind of look like it's at the edge of our paper. You know, we don't want it angled too far in. So I kind of made it look like it was kind of hitting the very edge of that. So you'll attach one, then you're going to have to kind of place that on there, you know, <clears throat> attach it. So attach your first one, you know, but you're going to use a lot of setting your circle on top of there just to make sure it's all working. That's what I'm trying to say. So this would make a great crossover card with Stamplistic <clears throat> in the in the center. Oh, yes, that would. Yeah, thanks, Teresa. So thanks. Maybe we should do a square card, <clears throat> um, one of these with, I didn't even think about that, but yes, I will show Jennifer because maybe we can do another one um, with square. Or, you know, with a bigger square card that Jennifer normally uses. So, Tammy McCoy's bringing her kits to Spring Bling, so she may be asking for some help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot, 944. Yep. Okay, sorry. I do have to get off. Amber Bolton's going to get on, but you're going to put that first one on there. Then you're going to kind of hold that in place, slide your second one on there, you know, so it kind of goes up to that edge. Then slide your third one on there then slide your fourth one on there and then you can layer this up and layer that up and it's all going to fit you're going to cut your edges your strips off that's going to layer onto there and again that's going to layer onto there so i apologize i think um, one of these coming up weeks on my thursday night i'll just hit on this one and i'll do it on my thursday night but this one i'm pretty sure you can get done by yourself so Thanks for ordering, Barbara. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. Sorry, I did not ask for more time. And I'm going to get off because live or Amber Bolton's on next. Um, you do need to refresh if you're watching on Facebook. Um, Carol Rand Randolph is our prize winner. And again, you'll see my name upcoming for Art Anthology Mixed Media at 1230 Eastern. So thanks, guys. Have a great day, and we'll see some of you next week at Springling. Bye. Bye.